a visual way of telling everyone a little bit about myself. Oh, yeah. um, so hopefully uh, this will show you, uh, you just tell you a little bit about myself. Yeah, we can see you. I'm extremely passionate about women in engineering. Especially when we are strong-willed women, women who speak their minds. Not everybody likes it, by the way, so it can sometimes be very, very hard getting up that ladder. But we can do it. so many random thoughts. I feel so, so low. Oh, God. that's it that All was that. that was great that's a great introduction yeah now we know exactly who you are and what you believe in so that is great so now i'll get on with the questions so what yeah. exactly is your background um what did you do in your 11th and 12th what have you studied in your graduation so my background has always been science uh mm -hmm. 11th 12th i had done uh science and i've taken up biology uh, mm -hmm. rather than computer science for some reason. Um, right. And uh, I, I love maths. I've always loved maths. Okay. So since growing up, it was very much, uh, for me, uh, it was, I want to do something which is science related. And I always wanted to do something that was technology. Mm -hmm. But reality was, uh, I was the college that I wanted to go, I was getting in doing biology. So I chose oh, biology. Okay. okay. Um, and yeah, I still enjoyed it. Um, and further on from there, I decided to do computer systems engineering. Okay. So that's when I, that's the region where I pursued my career in. All right. That is great. So what are the job opportunities one can pursue after having a degree in computer systems engineering? So I think that uh, 
I think if you do a degree like computer systems engineering, it's quite broad and it mm -hmm. opens up a lot of opportunities. So uh, for it's me, oh, somebody was not on mute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for yeah. me, it kind of opens up, uh, there are different options. You can do a uh, computer engineering. Mm -hmm. So if whilst you're doing the degree, you will understand, you will learn different subjects. You will know what you like, what you don't like. Uh, and based on your likes and dislikes, you can decide where you start your career. So uh, I, uh, I know when I was doing my computer systems engineering, I was fascinated with systems engineering. I was less keen on software programming. Right. So, uh, you know, I pursued my first job was systems engineer. Okay. But that sort of a degree, you could do software engineering. You could become a master in Java, MATLAB, C++, whatever program that really makes you excited and that makes you happy. Alternatively, you can do something called systems engineering where you are thinking about requirements. So if you take uh, an example, anything that you see in front of you, that you touch, you feel, you sit on, everything has to be designed okay so if you take our phones for example mm -hmm. anybody would have to uh, identify what is it that you want your phone to do so when you go to a shop you know you want a phone with a camera you want a phone that supports social media you want a phone that will make calls you want you know these are called requirements nice. so you focus on getting all your requirements right then you develop that uh, product and then you test the product. So that is everything to do with systems engineering. And that really fascinated me during my degree. So I pursued my career in systems engineering. Mm -hmm. Something else that you can do is also mechanical engineering. Um, because uh, that, I know it says computer systems engineering, but you can deal a lot with mechanical stuff. So it, it opens a different areas of uh, opportunities, depending on what you like and what you enjoy. Right, absolutely, all right. So my next question to you is, so you were studied from the University of Sheffield. So what did you enjoy the most when you were studying over there? I think it was for me, my memories are friendship. Okay. So if you look at, uh, you know, the, there are two sides. There's the educational side and there is, uh, you know, university side, which is very different. No matter where you are in the world, it's the most beautiful thing about that is uh, the friends you will make, the friends right. you will throughout your life whilst studying. That is my best memory of university. But, uh, you know, apart from that, for me, I came to UK when I was 17 years old. Um, and believe it or not, I had never stayed away from my family even for one night. So it was a big shock to the system. Um, and it was very, very interesting with, with the view of uh, meeting different people and uh, learning different cultures because it's so diverse you've got so many different cultures they're all integrated that was quite a good learning curve and also when you look at the education system is very very different to what we are brought up with in in india right. so that was uh, that was also a little bit of a shock but in a good way so embracing all of that learning different things learning different cultures learning different subjects was was awesome at that point all right that is amazing okay so my next question to you is how do you think stem will progress in the future years the thing you do with stem is contributing towards that look at climate control climate change environment you can go into that um everything that you do that is STEM related is going to power the economy of our entire globe. So, you know, you're kind of adding on to it. So that's where I feel that, uh, you know, there's so much focus on STEM that you can do a lot of things. You can invent, you can build, you can uh, drive innovation in the, in the world. 
Um, so I feel like we need more people in STEM. We need to encourage them. We need to create technologies that are going to make this a beautiful place for the next generations to come. So I think STEM has got a very long way to go. Yes, that answer was very insightful. My uh, next question to you is, so we have someone like you, right? Who can tell us what exactly computer systems engineering is, what you're getting yourself into. How did you decide when you were in the 11th or 12th grade that this is what you wanted to do? So for me, when I was uh, in the 11th, uh, you know, there was something uh, that was very clear. Um, I, uh, as a person, I am very much a problem solver. So okay. you give me a problem, I can solve. I can close my eyes and imagine physics and maths. Okay. But if you ask me to memorize, I can't memorize. No. So for me, it was uh, biology was always... I have to memorize biology, yeah. zoology, oh my God. And I could, I, I still got good marks, but I, I, it wasn't something that was coming from inside. Uh, whereas the technology side was coming from inside. And I was fascinated with computers at that point because we're talking nearly 20 years ago. I know it's a long time, but that time it was the new thing, you know. So that fascinated me quite a lot. That's when I decided, for, for me, it was a longer, I've always been a visionary. So for me, it was five years, what do I want to do? I want a great job in a multinational organization. That was my goal. And then I took a step back. I almost reverse engineered it. So then it was like, right, okay, what type of companies I want to work with? And I had, trans, I, I actually had uh, aeroplanes and I had uh, cars. I love cars, sports cars, Formula One cars. So then I thought, right, for me to get into that, what are the degrees I could do? So there was mechanical engineering, there's electrical engineering, there is computer systems engineering. Uh, mechanical, I, I then started exploring each of those sectors. Mechanical was not right for me. Electrical, it's, it's a no-no for me. I, I'm not very good with DC, AC currents and everything. So, you know, I didn't want to do that. Um, and then computer system kind of fitted everything I liked. It, uh, you know, it was computers, it was systems engineering. I didn't know anything, but I knew I could learn. Um, so, yeah, that's how I, I, I landed up getting systems engineering. All right, that is great. So uh, to all the viewers here, this will be my last question. So after ma'am answers it, you guys can start typing in your questions in the chat box or you could raise your hand and I'll be recognizing you. So my last question to you is, is there any final piece of advice you would like to give to us budding girls and boys in STEM? Yes, oh my God. I've got a few pieces of advice. So make sure you note this down, okay? okay. One is be confident don't feel like you can't do anything make sure you have that confidence and you feel you can do it okay that's for me it's it's all about the confidence second make sure you have the courage courage to ask so if you don't understand anything if you're not sure be strong be bold and ask the question because you're not going to lose anything you know What's the worst that's going to happen? The person is not going to respond to your answer, but make sure you ask. Um, also, don't be afraid of failing. Failing, it, because I, I, I find initially, you know, especially when I was in school, I was very afraid that I might do something and I'm going to fail, for, you know? So you almost don't do it because you don't want to fail. No. Learn, learn from your experiences and make sure you don't fail again. So That's it's very important, you know, don't be afraid, go, do it. Another thing that I've learned over these years is make sure you surround yourself with the right people, right friends, filter. If the person or the friend is not right for you, don't waste time, you know. It's something that it's, it's very important and all you little girls and boys will learn over, over time. And most importantly, be happy and have fun with what you do. 
because you know when you're happy and when you're enjoying your job you will progress absolutely okay so now i'll move on to the questions from our viewers someone has asked what was the first uh, first thing you designed what was the first thing i designed uh, it was the start system so uh if you all ladies uh, boys know uh, it's the xwb is a major aircraft okay. uh, that does long haul flights and it's a beautiful aircraft so i was in charge of designing the starting of that engine so it was absolutely phenomenal that was one of my systems engineering job mm -hmm. where i had to make sure uh, that the engine started within Uh, a set amount of time uh, and everything electronically worked so that when the pilot pressed the start button it started and that is, that was awesome that was my first designing job all right wow that is amazing someone else has asked what what are the most interesting projects you have worked on and how much time did they take to complete uh so one of the uh, most interesting project uh, that i remember is uh, again it's to do with rolls royce it's an engine called the dreamliner uh, boeing 787 where uh, we had to test this is before it was flying people around which it is right now we had to test that uh, uh, it it is fit for purpose um and i uh, was i was that at that point the team leader and i had a big team and uh, i was traveling the world to different test beds testing the engine and yeah it was phenomenal uh, i remember it was 18 months of preparation to do one major test that was going to certify the engine so that we so that it's safe for people to fly on So that was my yeah that was uh, that was amazing and okay. i got to travel the world so yeah couldn't ask for more absolutely absolutely okay someone else has asked how do you meet more people with sim with similar ideologies as yourself how do you meet more people so it's very important to network networking is key uh, you know be curious so uh there now we are now in a world where we've got so much technology around us we've got so much social media okay so it's very important for example if you like what i'm doing if you like my ideas it's very important for you to network with me and then when you see i will also i have a network of like minded people right. that's how you kind of you know slowly grow your network and one tip it's very important when you network to build that connection with the person and when you have that connection with the person you will also grow by learning from that person and Absolutely. that happens uh, you know no matter what stage you are in your career because i have it with my ceos right now so you know that just keeps evolving but networking absolutely so someone has asked do you have a life mantra that you follow or how do you maintain how do you make sure that you're being productive i am very driven okay mm -hmm. um so i uh, i always have um i always have a vision and i know that once i have a vision i'm i hope you all know sonic character right right we do sonic the hedgehog i'm Absolutely. a bit like that you know once i have my vision i'm like a little sonic running to get it so my mantra is you know have a vision have a big dream and then run towards it um and i think as i have grown and as i have learned more throughout my career um i have become very good at prioritizing and that is something that you know you you all uh, should also do what when you have you know for example exams studies and everything you know you have so many things to do right and and sometimes your mind goes oh my god i don't even know which way to go and then on top of that there's a lot of pressure to get really good marks 
Absolutely. So one thing you should do, and it might help, is you take a step back and you prioritize. You know, what is the top thing that you need to do? And then work through that list. That always helps, no matter where you are in your career, whether you're doing studies or you're, you know, where I am right now. But if I had known this when I was doing school, it would have helped me. I didn't know it. <laughs> so that's for all of you. Okay. Someone has asked, did you get any research opportunities during your undergraduation? Uh, yeah, uh, I had, so when I was doing uh, my undergraduate studies, uh, we had to do, I had to do a dissertation in my final year. So that mm -hmm. was like a good uh, research program, uh, pro project. Uh, at that point, I was very fascinated with um, uh, analysis and prediction. Uh, and that's what I did my project in. So, you know, just to give you a little bit of an example, when you go to a supermarket, okay, mm -hmm. so, you know, when you go to a supermarket, when you check out, they will have lots of sweets over there. You know, there is always the mentality is to get you to buy something, something that probably you don't need, but because it's in front of you, you might buy it. So that all, you know, believe it or not, there are huge systems that are designed to identify what products to place where so that you sell them quickly and you make more profit. And that is what my research was in. How do we develop a system that will predict what somebody is going to buy the most when they check out, which was very fascinating. Right, right, yeah. That's, because that's, you wouldn't have just thought that, you know, somebody is just going to put some crisps and chocolates over there because that's you common. You arrange it in a certain way. Yeah. They don't think about... Exactly. Yeah, There's a different perspective on it. Absolutely. And uh, I, I, I don't... I think in uh, India, probably when you go to major shopping markets, they might be following it. But over here and in the States, for every supermarket, there's like massive selections. Mm -hmm. And they use this whole analysis, which was incredibly fascinating. Absolutely. Okay. Someone yes, asked, that's research and development. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Someone else has asked, how do you think computer systems engineering is doing in India? And how much scope of the field do you see in the country? Uh, I think regardless of where you are in the world it is doing very well because and actually it's only going to get better because of the power that computer has right. if you think about it we are now getting into the world of artificial intelligence we are getting into the world of virtual reality and let me tell you something Anything that you see, whether it is medical, whether it is engineering, whether if your passion is Bollywood or Hollywood, music, everything needs a computer specialist. So movies, everything, how do they get movies? Because somebody is doing the design of it. Somebody is doing the video editing. Somebody is doing the graphics of everything that you see music you've got the microphone it's all linked to electronic system so when you go to an amazing gig somebody has been responsible for all the engineering activities to go so that you can hear the person giving a beautiful live performance you look at uh you know uh, i don't know if you girls have seen i am legend or i robot the yeah, type of you know, that is really what we are heading to. That's what artificial intelligence is all about. So I feel that no matter where you are, computer systems engineering or anything to do with computers, AI is always going to just be booming because our, our world is becoming more and more technology dependent. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So someone else has asked, what was the thing that made you develop your confidence? So like you mentioned, and in the beginning also, you were, you know, you weren't as confident as you are now. So what was yeah. it that changed it for you or that changed your perspective on it? So for me, there were uh, 
you know, everything I said, I wasn't before. So I wasn't self-confident. Mm -hmm. But one thing I was never, uh, I saw I was never afraid of asking. I was never afraid of failing. And uh, the more I asked, the more I failed, the more I learned, yeah. which then get, got my confidence up. And then there were incidences where I had gone for an interview, okay? Mm -hmm. And I thought I did really, really badly, okay. okay? And I think it's to do with us as females. We want everything correct. We want, we want to meet every box, okay? Yeah. Very much perfectionist. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to get this job. The next thing, I get a phone call saying I've been offered the job and they were going oh. to do my visas and everything for me. They were so impressed with me. So I asked them, okay, you have all these confidence. What's the feedback? You know, why did you like me so much? And uh, their uh, immediate reaction was, we love the confidence you had. And that's when it struck me that, you know, oh my God, confidence is so powerful, you know? And, uh, and then it, it was slowly over time that it built. But if you embrace asking questions, failing, and more importantly, learning, because if you learn, you, you cannot fail again in the same mm. subject. You, you can fail in a different thing, but not in the same thing. When you, when you get into the cycle of doing that, you will automatically see your confidence get better. Absolutely. Okay, so I think this is our uh, last question. So someone has asked, has being a female ever affected your career path or your career growth? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, and, uh, I think I would be lying if I said it hasn't. It's not easy. It's, it's hard. Um, but at the same time, it is incredibly rewarding. Um, so, you know, there have been incidences where you have to remember engineering, STEM, it's a very male dominated environment. Absolutely. Okay. But when you are there, when you have the right confidence, when you have the courage, you will do what is required. And as long as you love it, you will succeed. So it's not going to be an easy journey. Uh, you know, I hope as we are becoming bigger, the world is going to get better and we are going to embrace more women in this journey. But it is very, very rewarding. It's very satisfying. And, you know, the, the, the contribution that you make to anything and everything is, is really good. It's, it, it makes you feel a better person. It makes me feel like I'm a better person. So, yeah, it's not easy, but it's not that bad either. Right. Okay, so on that wonderful note, I don't think we have any more questions. We can end today's session. Thank you so much for joining us, ma'am. It was an absolute honor hosting you. And thank you for sharing all those personal insights that you gave us. They were very valuable. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone.